How many of you are going to praise him this morning? When you feel like it and when you don't feel like it, we give him praise. Amen. Amen. Come on, praise him. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is Come on, let's say it again. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power yeah, yeah. in the name of Jesus. There is power. There is To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, oh Lord, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Come on, let's say, there's an army. There's an army. Right. How many to know that? How many there's know that? How many know it? There's an army, there's an army rising up. There's an army. There's an army. Yeah. Oh Lord, yes it is. Oh Lord, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every. Lord, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Come on, let's say it like you mean it. There's an army. There's an army. Right right in the name of Jesus. Let's go back. There's power in the name. There is power in the name of Jesus. Power. 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 There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Yes, sir. How many believe in this moment? Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Rising up. There's an army yeah. rising up. Rising up. In the name of Jesus. Lord. Break every chain. Break every chain. Oh Lord, we need to do. Break every chain. 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 Break every ch
many here the chains falling? How many here the chains falling? Come on, brother. Him this morning. Did you really come to exalt him this morning? Did you really come to adore him this morning? Did you really come to lift his name high this morning? Did you really come to give him glory this morning? Let's go, Greg. You deserve my worship. You deserve my worship. You deserve my worship. You deserve my worship, oh Lord. As I bow down before you, worship and adore you. You deserve my worship, oh Lord. Come on. You deserve my worship. You deserve my worship. You deserve my worship. Serve my worship, oh Lord. As I bow down, as I bow down before you, worship and adore you. Deserve you deserve my worship. 
worship the Lord And I bow down before you Worship and adore you deserve. You deserve my worship, oh Lord Oh, you deserve my worship You deserve my worship You deserve my worship You deserve my worship, oh Lord We come to lift your name on high. Our Father, as we come this morning thanking you for last night's sleep, for watching over us as we slumbered and slept. You didn't let no hurt, home, or danger come upon us. You, we just want to say thank you. You woke us this morning with a thing of love to a new day. We want to say thank you, Lord. Because you didn't have to wake us, but you did. We want to thank you for your love and your mercy that woke us up this morning. Your grace that has kept us, oh Lord. We just want to say thank you for the blood running warm in our veins. Thank you, Lord, because you're worthy to be played. Father, we thank you for what you've already done, what you're doing and what you're still going to do. We thank you, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, we want to give you praises this morning. We want to glorify your name this morning. We just want to lift up our hands and give us, give us, we give it all to you this morning, oh Lord. And oh Father God, we asking you to bless mankind everywhere. Bless our men and women in uniform. Bless our sick and shut in, the prison bound, the homeless, the grieving families. We know you already there, but we asking you too, Lord. Heavenly Father, we asking you to bless. Bless this land, oh Lord. Bless mankind, Lord. We need peace in the universe. And we asking you, Father God, to send that peace, oh Lord. And oh Heavenly Father, we asking you to bless our church family. We want to ask you to bless our pastor and his family. Lord, keep them in your loving care. Bless all our members, oh Lord. Lord, we stand in need of a blessing. And Lord, we want to ask you to help us to bless the vision that we have. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you. And oh, Heavenly Father, as we go into this Holy Week, Lord, we ask you to watch over us, Lord. Let us pray. Pray like we never prayed before, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. These blessings I ask in your name. Amen. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha.
Praise the Lord, everybody. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. 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 Never run dry. Oh, never.
church say amen. amen you love the Lord say amen again God has been good to you you know that it would never run dry put your hands together and give God a hand clap of praise in the building amen, amen. thank you for that reminder and sound jubilee choir yeah, amen we serve a good God let me say that again. We serve a good God. Amen. And God is truly worthy to be praised. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, somebody tell me where would we be? We thank God for the strength of our morning's prayer by Dickens Margaret Flores, for the presence of Reverend Karen Phillips and Reverend Dr. Hezekiah Carpes, and for you, my brothers and sisters, on this Christian journey. This week, my brothers and sisters, we make preparation for our Holy Week services, often referred to as our Week of Passion, where we begin on Monday night and we go through Thursday night. And we have various churches and our church families coming in to worship with us, and praise and worship begins 7 p.m. nightly. Now we have guests coming to our house and you know I often tell you nobody ought to come to your house and you not be home. Amen, somebody. Amen. Uh, we all have alarm systems in our houses to protect people from breaking in, but when you invite them to come to your house, then we ought to be here in order to receive them. You said, Reverend said, what night? You know, some people may not make every night, but you ought not to miss every night. Amen, somebody. And you ought not to just be on the night you supposed to sing. Amen, somebody. You ought to be here other nights to support other folks who are singing. That's what family does. We support one another. Amen. Now, on Monday night, uh, Dr. Preston Harrison and the Black Jack Baptist Church family of uh, Winsboro, South Carolina, will be with us. Dr. Harrison has just become the pastor of that church. I've ran a number of revivals for Black Jack, and we wanted to extend the invitation for them to come and share with us our uh, male chorus and Jubilee Choir. We were in their music. On Tuesday night, our moderator for the Gethsemane Baptist Association, the Reverend Dr. Jamie O. Graham, and the St. John Baptist Church will be with us on that Tuesday night. And a change on scheduling, the voices of praise will run the music on Tuesday night, and the deliverance of praise will run the music on Wednesday night. If you get it twisted, just come both nights and you can sing with both choirs. Amen, somebody. Amen. Voices of praise on Tuesday night and the deliverance of praise on Wednesday with the Reverend Dr. Charles A. DeLawler, Dr. DeLawler of Bethlehem on Lyon Street. Just celebrated his 30th pastor anniversary that we preached for him on last week. Then on Thursday night, we have the Reverend Kevin Russell Shepherd and the Mount Zion Baptist Church of Broom Straw Road in Chapin, South Carolina, and the United Voices will render music. We're looking for a great time in praise and fellowship. Then on Friday night, on March the 25th, the praise team will accompany me to the Dennis Chapel Baptist Church in order to, as I preach the Good Friday services. Uh, and someone asked the question, why, why is it Good Friday when we realize what happened on Good Friday? It's Good Friday because Good Friday leads to Resurrection Sunday. Without Good Friday, there would not be any Resurrection Sunday. I would just want to preach on that Friday night service on the sermon idea. It had to happen. So you, can, you can't get, skip Good Friday. Because you skip Good Friday, you miss Resurrection Sunday. So Good Friday, it had to happen. Remind our youth manager, our young adults, that rehearsal will be on Saturday, March the 26th at 10 a.m., and we're preparing for our Central Baptist Easter production, The Witness. That's the name of to be presented by our youth department, our Vessel of Inspiration on Saturday, March 26th. That time has been changed from 4 o'clock to 5 p.m. Let's come out and support our young people and all the work. They have been practicing day and night. 
left and right. Amen. On that Saturday morning, the, the young people have their practice. Then they have the production on that Friday. And the team leaders came and met with me today. And they said, Pastor Ezel, we want to come that morning and practice. But we want to stay through and be here at 5 o'clock. I said, y'all want to stay through and be here at 5? They said, yeah, we still want to do our other practice. We got work to do. We don't want to leave. If they want to stay, we're going to make preparation for them to stay. Amen. It's good to have that excitement and that enthusiasm to want to stay. And then finally, it's not a couple's ministry trip to uh, Charlotte. It's anybody who have a $25 trip. Did y'all get that? Anybody who had $25 can ride the bus. Amen. It's a couple of minutes from where you got time to get a couple. We need to fill the bus. It's a whosoever has $25 that you can ride on the bus to go. Amen, somebody. I don't have the kind of patience to go from store to store to try to save a dollar. So they're going to drop me off in the food court. <laughs> when they come back up, they'll pick me up from the same location in the food court. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to make sure cookie doesn't spend too much. So we're going to fellowship. So sign up after this so we'll have enough that we can go. Amen. Stewardship, we have to be good stewards of what we do. Let me tell you what happened. It has nothing to do with this, but you know when you preside, you can just bring stuff in. Cook and I were going out of town this weekend, and I went up to my favorite cleaner, different cleaners to get the shirts cleaned that I wear, and I had about 30 or 40 shirts. And I pulled up on that Friday afternoon, and the lady said, it's $2.70 something cent per shirt. I said, why it's so high? She said, well, you know, they're dollar something on Mondays, but they two dollars something today. And said, I said, I see your money. <laughs> they seal in the trunk. I, I, I see your money. Amen. <laughs> We're called to be good and faithful stewards of what the Lord has blessed us with. Amen. We have a special concert coming up. Anthony, share with us what is happening on the fourth Sunday as far as a recording concert with uh, Columbia Mass. You can share with us at this time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. I um, just want to share with you that point. Anthony, Anthony, you look better standing. You always sharp. I don't see how you make no announcement sitting down. Grab the mic. See how sharp you look, man? Just pull that mic. Got that big fat knot tie and all that stuff. Just get on up there. You can, you, you can take the mic out of the stand. What do you want to do? Do what, you, do what you do. Thank God I don't look like what I've been through. Hallelujah, <laughs> Hallelujah. I hear you. Just want to um, just want to say to you all that on next Sunday at the hour four, PM, uh, myself and Columbia Mass Choir will be doing their live recording and just want to invite my church family, amen, amen. to come out and help us celebrate um, this event and what a mighty move of God that we are expecting, amen, amen, thank you so much. Amen, amen, amen. Let us stand as we prepare to give back to the Lord a portion of that which he's blessed us with. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give back to you a portion that you have blessed us with. The word declares that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. For we acknowledge that worship giving is an act of worship. Earlier, we've been singing. Singing is an act of worship. Deacon as Flores led us in prayer, and praying is an act of worship. After the scripture reading, I will preach. Preaching is an act of worship. Now we worship you through our giving to demonstrate our love to you. We bring your tithes and we bring our offering. Thanking you for the opportunity to give back to you. We remind those who made pledges so at the capital campaign fund. 
your pledge was not to the pastor, nor to the church, nor to the building across the street, but your pledge was before God. Continue to let your light shine so that others may see his good work and that God, our Father who's in heaven will get the glory. It's never about us, but God is always about you. For thank you for the opportunity to give. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Outside our face, the wall, inside our face, each other, follow the direction of our usher.
thing what he did for me. Amen. Let us stand as we prepare for the reading of our scripture. Every third Sunday, our scripture is congregational. The gospel according to John chapter 12, beginning at verse number 12. 12. 12th chapter, 12th verse through the 15th verse. Now when you go at home, and when you're at home, read in its entirety, uh, chapter 12, verses 12 through 19. But for sermonizing today, we're just going to focus on 12 through 15. Hmm? Let's read it together. But as a common, just take a breath. But as a period, just take a pause and we'll move on. Amen. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, sound like I'm by myself, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass coat. Remain standing. Say, I did not curse when I said ass. I did not curse when I said Amen. thought I was worth saving so you came and changed my life you thought I was worth keeping so you cleaned me up inside you thought I was the die so you sacrificed your life so I could be free so I could be whole, so I could tell everyone I know. You thought I was worth saving. You came. You came and changed my life. You thought I was worth saving. You cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So I could tell everyone. Oh, you thought I was worth saving. Yeah, you can. Oh, you thought I was worth saving. You cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for You sacrificed So I could be free So I could be old So I could tell everyone Change my, my life. Oh, and I will praise you. Forever. I'll worship you. Forever. I'll give you glory. Forever. Because I am. 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 And I'll tell everyone. everyone. Come on, let's lift him up. Change my, my life. Oh, and I will praise you. Forever. I'll worship you. Forever. I'll give your glory. Forever. I'll give your honor. Forever. You deserve it, Lord. 
Would you just love the Lord? I praise you forever because I am, because I am, and I will tell. Of you, I'll give you glory, I'll give you honor. You deserve it, Lord. You deserve it, Lord. I'll praise you forever because I am, because I am whole, and I will tell everyone you thought I was worth saving. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life so I could be free. Gospel according to John, chapter 12, verses 12 through 19, but on today, we just want to look at 12 through 15, and verse 13 reads as follows, and they took branches of palm trees, went forth to meet him, and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. On this Palm Sunday day, the crowd one minute was crying Hosanna, but a few days later they were crying crucify him. I want to talk just a little while today from this ceremony thought, beware of the crowd. Beware of the crowd. Before I embark upon the text, let me say this good seeing Sister Cheryl Jones back in worship service with us. We know that she's been out and it's just good to see her back. Amen. No matter what medicine, what the doctor could give her, the best medicine she has, a little card right there. He came up to me, asked me to pray for her even before she went in the hospital. She all right now, as long as he buys, she's going to be all right. And it's good to see Sister Lisa Wallace back in worship service with us. We praise God. We miss you from church. We miss you from the choir. But know that we've been praying for you. Amen. God bless you so much. 
amen, amen. Beware of the crowd. My brothers and my sisters, we reside in a time where it is popular to be a crowd pleaser rather than trying to please God. It is so easy now for some folks to go along just to get along. Can I share a secret with you? It's all right to be different. It's all right to be different. Remember, you are an original. You're not anybody else carbon copy. You're wonderful, fearfully, and marvelously made. I used to hear the choir singing, I will go if I have to go by myself. I want to remind those who are gathered today that when it comes to the crowd, everybody loves a winner. As long as you're on top, everybody loves a winner. It was only a few months ago, Peyton Manning of the Denver Broncos, they were labeling him as someone who did not have it anymore. They said Peyton couldn't even throw a ball straight down the street, cause the street down the field because his arm strength was so weakened. At that time, Brock Oswald had appeared out of the scene. And let me tell you, you can't compare a flesh in the pan to a legend. Flesh in the pan may look good for a week or two, but when you got 18, 20 some years experience, that's a whole different ball game. Peyton got hurt. They said that he threw more interception. His completion rate was down. And all of a sudden, they had to bring him back in, and he became the star and led them to the Super Bowl. Now he's portrayed as a legend. And after his coach, the team that he played for many years, had just announced they're constructing a statue for him at, 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 at Lucas Oil Stadium there. So everybody loves a winner. It was not long ago, young, uh, young boy looked like he ought to be in high school. Uh, uh, attended Davidson College, Davidson University, and went in the NBA, and they said he was too small, he would never make it, but he wound up leading his team to the championship and becoming the, the MVP of the league and Stephon Curry, because everybody likes a winner. When things are going well and you're on top, everybody loves a winner. But I've been in some games where the crowd was cheering the first quarter and booing the second half. You better be aware of the crowd. At Fort Valley State College, let me correct that, the Fort Valley State University. I was part of the SGA my senior year. And the local newspaper had written an article on the school, a very negative article about the school and, and about uh, some of the people working on the grounds, how they would sleep and be downtown and not working, just a very negative article. I called the entire meeting of the student body. Uh, a gymnasium was packed out and a student body and this reporter showed up who had written the article. And they informed me, they said, Ricky, the lady who wrote the article is here. And I asked her to stand, and she stood. I asked the student body, would you all like for her to stay, or would you like for her to leave? All of a sudden, I heard the chance saying, get your hat, your coat, and leave. Then they just, a uh, few thousand people, get your hat. They saw the pointing. The next day, when the newspaper came out, I was headlined as the one who asked her to leave. I did not ask her to leave. I asked the body with me, did they want her to leave? But sometimes you're going to be singled out from the crowd. So you got to realize you can't always count on the crowd to be there with you. I wish I had a prayer in church. And I didn't learn any better. That's just me. I was just raised as well. I always got involved in stuff. I probably should have stayed out of but when I arrived at the University of South Carolina for graduate school, uh, James Holderman was the president of the USC, and we thought there was some racial discriminatory practice going on and in the area we were in. So uh, they elected me to contact the president for a meeting to address all of our concerns. President gave us a meeting the next morning at 9 o'clock and, and I've talked to everybody on the telephone that night. Well, Ricky, you start off then. We're going to chip in. We're going to jump in. 9 o'clock, I was by myself. 
be aware of the crowd. The crowd can be with you one minute and the crowd could turn on you the next minute. But I've learned that sometimes, my brothers and sisters, you have to stand. If you got to stand all by yourself. Do I have a witness in here? You can't always count on somebody else to stand with you. But when you're right, you got to stand if you have to stand all by yourself. Dr. Martin Luther King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We just can't be content when things are going well for us. But we got to be willing to stand. And sometimes the crowd may not always be with you. But look at our text on the day. John shifted the scene in our text. From a quiet dinner in Bethlehem into a noisy public parade in Jerusalem. All four Gospels record this event and their accounts should be compared. This was the only public demonstration that our Lord allowed while he was ministering on earth. His purpose was to fulfill the Old Testament prophecy of Zechariah 9 and 9. The results was a growing animosity on the part of the religious leader leading eventually to the crucifixion of the Savior. There were three different groups in this crowd that day, my brothers and sisters. You had the Passover visitors from outside Judea, the local people who had witnessed the raising of Lazarus, and the religious leaders who were greatly concerned about what Jesus might do at the feast. At each of the different feasts, the people were in keen expectation, wondering if Jesus would be there and what he would do. It looked as though Jesus was actually seeking to incite a revolution and establish himself as king, but that was not what he had in mind. What did, you, what did this event mean for Jesus? For one thing, it was a part of his obedience to do his father's will. The prophet Zechariah prophesied that the Messiah would enter Jerusalem in that manner, and he fulfilled the prophecy. Daughter of Zion is another name for the city of Jerusalem. Certainly, Jesus was openly announcing to the people that he indeed is the king of Israel, the promised Messiah. No doubt many of the pilgrims hoped now that he would defeat the Romans and set the nation of Israel free. What did this demonstration mean to the Romans? Nothing is recorded about the Romans' viewpoint, but it's certain that they kept a close watch that day. During the annual Passover feast, it was not uncommon for some of the Jewish nationalists to try to arouse the people, and perhaps they thought that this parade was that kind of event. I imagine that some of the Roman soldiers must have smiled at the word, the triumphal entry, entry because it was nothing like their own, own Roman triumph. Celebration in the city of Rome, whenever a Roman general was victorious on foreign soil, killing at least 5,000 of the enemy and gaining new territory, he was given a Roman triumph. When he returned to the city, it was a Roman's equivalent of the American ticker tape parade only with much more splendor. The victor would be permitted to display the trophies he had won and the enemy leaders he had captured. What an event. The parade ended at the arena where some of the captives entertained the people by fighting wild beasts. Compared to the Roman triumph, our Lord's entry into Jerusalem was nothing. The name Jerusalem, I said earlier, means city of peace. Every now and then, my brothers and sisters, you, you want to find Jerusalem, you want to find a city of peace. Uh, you want to find a foundation of peace. I don't know how you feel about it, but every now and then, you just need a little peace. Regardless of what's going on in your life, you need a little peace. You need the blessed, calm assurance that everything is going to be all right. And the people were hoping that Jesus would bring them the peace that they needed. However, he wept because he saw what lay ahead of the nation. War, suffering, destruction, and a scattered people. At his birth, the angels announced peace on earth. But in his ministry, Jesus announced war on earth. It is significant that the crowd shouted peace in heaven. Because that is the only place where there is peace today. The statement, behold, the world is going after him, was both an exaggeration and a prophecy. In the text section, we meet some visitors from outside of Israel. And my brothers and sisters, regardless of the situation, the crowd was gathered right now. And I've learned when it comes to the crowd, don't worry about counting your numbers, but you better make sure that your numbers count. I've learned that you ought to give God your best, whether you have a crowd or not. 
I say to our social ministers, when you stand to preach, uh, preach like to be your very last time. Whether you're preaching before 500 or whether you're preaching before five, uh, you ought to stand and give God your very best. Uh, you're not guaranteed that you're going to get another chance in order to stand and proclaim the word of God. Uh, I wish I had a praying church in here. So I don't worry about having a crowd. Uh, I just worry about doing my father's will and uh, being obedient to what God has called me to do. Uh, see, God didn't call us in ministry to be successful, but God did call us to be faithful. And we are faithful in what God has called us to do. Then God has a way of rewarding our faithfulness. Uh, and I want to have a witness in here that if you learn to just put your trust in the Lord, that the Lord will reward your faithfulness. If you learn how to lean and depend on the Lord, that the Lord will reward your faithfulness. Somebody here ought to be glad about it. I'm so glad that God still is in the blessing business. And all I have to do is to call on his name and be faithful to what God has called me to do. And the Lord will make a way somehow. I believe I got a few witnesses in here who can testify to somebody uh, what the Lord has already done, uh, what the Lord is doing right now, and what the Lord will do in the future. So I don't have to wait for anything to happen. Uh, I can just praise the what is already done, man. Praise him what is already brought, man. And praise him what is already kept, man. And praise him that he never left, man. To have a witness in this house today. If it wasn't for the Lord on your side, where would we be? To have anybody here. That regardless of the crowd, that you're still going to praise God. Regardless of the crowd, while the blood is still running warm in my veins. That regardless of the crowd, that he's worthy to be pray ah oh, beware of the crowd the first thing when it comes to the crowd we should see the anticipation of the crowd for the thousand of years watch this the Jewish people have been looking for a messiah they were expecting a great military leader they were expecting great leaders who had military experience and they may have retired from the reserve and may have retired as a captain or major from the Air Force. Just looking, just talking to myself. Just looking for those with great military leaders. And those leaders, because of their experience, would help them overthrow all of Israel's enemy and restore Israel to its former's greatness and glory. Great military leaders, tall in stature. Great military leaders, shoulders erect, and great military leaders that look like a leader ought to look. What they had not expected was that king would appear as a carpenter. They never expected that he would possess no weapons, no army, and no political power. They certainly never knew that he would be crucified on the cruel cross of their oppressors. However, throughout the earthly life of Jesus, they were given evidence on top of evidence that Jesus was who he said he was. He proved his identity time and time again by his miracle, by his pedigree, by the place of his birth, by the signs and wonders numerous to mention. Yet they refused to believe that he was the Messiah. Time and time again, he revealed himself unto them. Time and time again, they rejected him so much that John puts it this way. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Yes, Jesus came unto his own, as even in his family and his friends, yet they refused to re receive him. Luke put it this way, and Jesus said, Foxes have hope, birds of hell have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. But as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believeth on his name. Mark 6, 3 and 4 said, Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph of Judith and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin, 
and in his own house. Uh, I stop by to remind somebody, sometimes the folks who are more critical on you are the ones who knew you when. Huh? Sometimes the folks who can't see the chain can't see what the Lord has done through you and to you are the folks who can remember what you used to be and what you used to do. Well, I wish I had a praying church in here. But you remind them that my Bible says any man, any woman be in Christ, that he is a new creature. And all things have passed away. And all things have become new. Uh, even though the anticipation of the crowd, they, they expected one thing, but our Savior came in another manner. I'm so glad that we don't have to fit the mold of the world. Uh, I'm glad that we're in the world, but we're not of the world because we've been transferred by the transformed by the renewing of our mind uh, that's why I can shout the victory and uh, I thank God I'm not what it used to be I thank God I'm not what it shall be because the Lord is not through with me yet uh, is that anybody testimony here today that the Lord is still working on you is there anybody testimony today that the Lord is not through with you yet is there anybody testimony uh, look where he brought me from. Is that anybody testimony? He brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. Look where he brought me from. Uh, I wish I had a witness in here that you haven't been saved all your life. Uh, you haven't been in church all your life. But God has been good to us uh, even when we were not good to ourselves. Uh, I don't have a few witnesses in here that I thank the Lord for what the Lord Lord is done for me. I, I thank the Lord for what the Lord is doing right now. To have anybody here in the midst of the anticipation of the crowd can look back over your life and thank God for where he brought you from. I, I ought to have a few witnesses in here. Say nobody but the Lord that brought me out of darkness into the marvelous life. Is there anybody here just can tell my God thank you. Is there anybody here can give him the high his praise and tell him hallelujah. Is there anybody here just can tell God glory? I wish I had somebody who been messed up and did some things wrong and the Lord has blessed you and the Lord has brought you from a mile long way. Is there anybody at Central that don't mind praising him? Is there anybody at Central that don't mind giving him the glory? Is there anybody at Central that love my Lord? Is there anybody at Central that love my Savior. Give God the praise right now. In this 12th chapter of John's Gospel, Jesus once more about to reveal his identity to the nation of Israel. They will be given one final opportunity to receive their king. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. <laughs> but that's my offering. I can't remember the rest. This chapter which records the details of the last few days of Christ's public ministry paints a portrait of Jesus. In these verses we will see who he is, what he can do, how he carried it out. As we consider these truths about the lost Jesus, I challenge you to look in your own heart. See where you stand in regard to the king. Have you received him? Are you living in him? Are you living in the rejection of this one who loves you? Do you allow the word of God to speak to your personal need? The king Christ got a wonderful reception when he arrived in Jerusalem from Bethany at the beginning of the week which involved his crucifixion. The text said much people that would come to the feast were there. Many in the reception of Christ included a great crowds of people coming from all over Israel, even other countries who celebrate the Passover, the most important religious celebration of the year for the Jews. The crowd was there was one who definitely called Lazarus out from his grave. You remember they declared that, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Uh, Jesus reminded them, I am the resurrection and life. He that believed in me, though he was dead, yet shall he live. For this great crowd was there, and always gathered for this triumphant entry. 
My brothers and sisters, all you have to look at the anticipation of this crowd. When the crowd came together, they anticipated a mighty king. But then they said they took branches off the palm tree, went forth to meet him, thereby we have Palm Sunday. The throwing of small tree branches on the road of which a dignitary was surpassed was a typical practice of that day by which the people honored the dignitary. Since it was branches of palm tree here, this occasion has officially been called Palm Sunday. So we look at the anticipation of the crowd. Now I want you to look at the attitude of the crowd. Christ did not walk, but he rode into Jerusalem on the first Palm Sunday. When he found a young ass sat there upon, other gospels accounts of this event gave many more details about how this animal was obtained from Christ to ride into Jerusalem. All four gospels give an account of this incident. So what you want to read is all four of the gospels and see the different way those gospel writers portray this incident. Remember one had declared that the Lord had need. The Lord told him to go tell him I have need of the animal. But both the humility of Christ and the power of Christ are exhibited here. Uh, he came riding such a lowly animal. His power is seen in that the animal was young. Animal had not been broken. So when you mount up to ride on an animal that's young and not broken, unless you are an experienced rider, the animal may buck and throw you. Yet this animal carried Christ without a problem of any kind. Can I suggest that even though this animal was young, can I suggest that even though he had not been broken, something unusual happened when Christ mounted him? A divine miracle obviously occurred. As it is written, fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, the king cometh, sitting on the ass coat. The riding on the coat was prophesied centuries earlier. Christ's conduct and fulfilling scripture showed that he guided his action according to the word of God. We should do likewise. Watch this. Sometimes the hand of God is doing the most when we are least conscious of the fact. Can I say that again? Sometimes the hand of God is doing the most when we are least conscious of the fact. Sometimes he works hardest when we think he is doing nothing. That the law was able to ride on an unbroken coat supplies food for thought. I said earlier, any other rider would encounter trouble and the less skillful would have been thrown. The young coat recognized that this is the law of creation and the young coat had more sense than many human beings. He realized that something unusual is getting ready to take place. The word record means that these are the witnesses that saw what happened. Here's the witness on this first Palm Sunday. The people with the witness. The people were those who have been called out when Lazarus was called out of the grave. They were privileged people. They've seen the miracle of Lazarus. They bear record of the facts. So that was proof and that was evident. For this cause, the people also met him that day and heard what he had done. Those who saw the miracle testified of it. This testimony caused others to come to Palm Sunday Robert to give honor to Christ. And that's what this Sunday and every Sunday is about, just to give honor unto Christ. We all need to be a witness who honor Christ. It may not always influence others to honor Christ because of their hard heart, but at least not our witness shall not be in vain. As I get ready to press my way to a close, I want to remind you that you ought to be aware of the crowd and you ought to be aware of the anticipation of the crowd sometimes the crowd wants one thing and sometimes the crowd wants another thing ah oh, but i can hear this crowd now as they were clamoring for a military type leader they were disappointed when they saw a little humble uh savior coming riding on the on a coat coming into Jerusalem in order to make his triumphal entry. Yes, and the crowd develop an attitude right then. In other words, sometimes the crowd can be with you. And sometimes the crowd can be against you. That's why you can't always count on the crowd. But can I tell you, you can count on our Savior. He will never leave you and he will never forsake you. Do I have a witness in here? 
I don't know how you feel about it, but we see the action on the crowd right now. Uh, see, the crowd may want one thing, and the crowd may want another thing. Uh, I can hear right about now. Uh, I can hear Eddie LaVert, uh, and I can hear Walt Williams of the OJs whispering in my ear that every now and then you got to give the people what they want. Uh, I wish I had. A praying church in here right about now. And the added action of the crowd. One minute they were crying, Hosanna. And the next minute they were crying, Crucify him. Everybody in here has been with a crowd like that. Sometimes they'll hang around you to see what they can get out of you. But Bill Wilder said they will use you until they use you up. Uh, to have anybody here but how many of you know I'm not worried about the crowd uh, long as Jesus is on my side I got a feeling that everything is going to be alright uh, I don't know who's in your posse I don't know who's in your crew uh, but I suggest that if you're going to hang out with anybody you ought to hang out with one who has three tangling together hang out with the trinity Hang out with the Father, hang out with the Son, and hang out with the Holy Ghost. Uh, do I have anybody here that's praying with me? I don't know about you, but you got to be careful of the crowd. The crowd will lift you up in order to let you down. And somebody ought to be careful of the crowd patting you on the back uh, for the same hand that they pat you with. They'll pull out a knife and stab you in the back with the same hand to have anybody that's praying with man but how many know that God before us uh, he is more than the world is against us uh, and the crowd cannot do us any harm uh, I'm getting ready to call a few witnesses who won't let the crowd stand in their way who would not allow come here woman with the issue of blood that woman had been bleeding for 12 long years uh, and she was trying to get to Jesus but the crowd had her blocked off and the woman pushed and shoved away until she touched the hem of his garment and when she touched the hem of his garment then everything was made alright is there anybody here that's willing to push out of the way in order to get to where Jesus is to have a witness in here come in here little Zach here with your little short Self. Can't see nobody, but he heard. I said he heard. I said he heard. I said he heard that Jesus was passing by. Zacchaeus ran up in the sycamore tree, and Jesus called them by his name and went home with Zacchaeus. And that day salvation came to Zacchaeus' house. Is there anybody here that's ready to run? somewhere and tell a dying world about a living savior that Jesus still lives uh, come here blind Bartimaeus come here on the road to Jericho uh, Bartimaeus heard that Jesus was passing by and Bartimaeus called them by his name uh, the crowd that day told Bartimaeus you're making too much noise uh, you're making too much fuss uh, Pastor Harper you need to quiet down because it don't take all of that but Bartimaeus kept hollering a little bit louder and then Jesus asked him what would you have me to do uh, Bartimaeus I want to receive my sight uh, I feel like Bartimaeus felt uh, every now and then when you need your blessing you better open up your mouth and you better cry unto the Lord and there's going to be somebody in the church uh, somebody on your road they say it don't take all of that but they don't know like you know what the Lord is done for you to have a witness in here you may not be able to stand sister Joan but you can still wave that hand and tell the 
Lord, when I went into surgery, you were already there. Lisa, you ought to be able to praise him for your healing and praise him for your mama's healing. There's somebody looking at you funny. Say, you don't need to make all that noise. But blind Bonnie Mayer said, the problem is you can't see. Bonnie Mayer said, you have your sight. I, I've never seen the sun set. I've never seen the cloud. I've never seen the star. So say, you can see, you can say that. But I want to get my breakthrough. I want to get my blessing. So I'm going to call on the name of the Lord. Don't you let anybody block your blessing. Don't you let the crowd tell you that it don't take all of that. You better tell the crowd, you better get out of my way. I'm going to get my blessing. I'm going to get my miracle. I'm going to get my breakthrough. I'm going to get my deliverance. I wish I had somebody here today that will praise my God for what God is doing in your life. I heard Deacon Clark Wiggum say, if he don't do anything else, if he doesn't open another door, if he doesn't make another way, he's already done more than I deserve. Does anybody feel like that in here? Don't you let anybody on your road look at you like you're crazy. You better tell your neighbor on your road, the Lord is still in the blessing business. How do I know he woke me up this morning, started me on my turn is there anybody here is there anybody here is there anybody here that'll praise him for who God is I need some show no praise of who the Lord has been good to who the Lord has made a way for who the Lord has opened a door for you I dare you I dare tell you to give him the best praise to give him the best glory he's worthy Go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Can anybody tell him thank you? Tell him you've been so good. Tell him thank you. The Lord is my shepherd. Tell him thank you. The Lord is my love. Tell him thank you. Weeping may endure for the night, but tell him thank you. Joy comes in the morning. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Hey! Be aware. Be aware of the crowd. You got to be aware of the crowd. Look at the anticipation of the crowd. Look at the attitude the crowd will see. Then look at the action. Same crowd that was saying Hosanna a few days later. They were saying crucify. Hmm? You better tell Bubba Pook and Shanae I can't hang with you. Where I'm getting ready to go, you can't go. And where you're going, I don't want to go. Uh, well, you getting ready to go? I don't want to go. The stuff you doing? Tell them I'm going home. I'll bring your T-shirt back. My T-shirt gonna say, "Been there, done that." <laughs> tell them I already been there. I've already done that. It's something better for me. It's something greater for me. It's something on the way for me. I don't have it yet, but I can shout in anticipation for what God is getting ready to do. Stop looking at where you are. Look at where you're getting ready to go. Look at what God is getting ready to do. Look at what God is getting ready to take you. We look at where we are now. Where you are now is preparation for where you're getting ready to go. Don't you let the crowd steal you off. 
Make sure you hear voice, God. The God, the voice of God, not the voice of the people. Hear God's voice. When we moved here, leaders who opposed this in the community and other areas, poor my social, did a sled check on me, background check on me. Because they was the crowd was saying that we can destroy the leader. We surely got a chance at the fathers. But what they did not know. Being an investment pro, uh, broker, I have a security clearance. <laughs> Said Sled has already cleared me. Security SC Exchange Commission already cleared me. NASD National Association of Security Dealers already cleared me. But if they didn't clear me 2,000 years ago, a man who went up God's gospel hill went to a place called Calvary, paid the price, paid the price in full. Know who you are and know whose you are. Don't you let people make you to feel you're less than who you are. Just because you made some mistakes, you're still somebody. You're still a child of a king, of the king. Only difference between a saint and a sinner is that a saint can say that we fall down, but we get back up again. You don't have to wallow in it. You can get back up again. I want you to know you got a new lease on life. Crowd can't control you. And people have a way of pulling dirt on you that happened years ago. They know what you did and who you did it with. They know who you were going with. And they have a way of just throwing that little small stuff in and turning the knife. Huh? They had the small stuff in and turning the knife. And you got to be careful. Those people can deter you from your destiny. When God has something great for you, haters will rise up against you. But your haters have one responsibility to make you greater. Your haters make you greater. Y'all didn't get that. Your haters make you greater greater you're about to get it by few you're scared to get it too much because you are, your haters make you greater so quit complaining about your haters and go in prayer and thank God for every hater that you ever had you ought to pray for more haters because the more haters you get it's gonna make you greater my prayer is come on haters Come on spectators, come on dictators, come on agitators, your haters make you greater. Can I say that again? Come on spectators, come on dictators, come on agitators, you're about to become a participator and a congratulator because your haters make you greater. Let us stay, let us stay as we prepare to extend the invitation for Christian discipleship. We may have had someone up under the sound of my voice today who want to step out from where you are, give the pastor your hand, but give God your heart. So you may come by letter, by your Christian experience, a candidate for baptism. We serve a whosoever will God. Whosoever will, let them come. Door of the church is open. Where could I go but to the Lord? Will you come? Yes, yes, yes. Need it, need it, need it. Oh, yes, yes, Lord. 
door of the church is open. Will you come? Say it, say it, say it. Yes, yes, yes. One more time, everybody, will you come? It's prayer time at the altar. Will you come to the altar for prayer? Will you come to the altar for prayer? Come to the altar for prayer.